Okay, we are going to call this matrix, um, let's say this matrix right here is <laughs> small a. This is really curse notation if you ask me. I mean, not using capital letters for matrix. <laughs> that, that is really curse. Mm, uncomfortably curse math memes. A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another episode of Kill Yourself Dead, you suck it Python, I hate your code, please go kill yourself, please finally kiss. <sighs> you, you there, yeah I'm talking about you two year old Indian feeders telling me that my programming sucks. Just a little PSA at first, everything I do on this channel is completely self learn be it the mathematics or the Python stuff we are doing here, all the Python I have ever learned. I learned for myself in like a week. Nothing more, nothing less. And I think for a week of learning programming language, I'm doing pretty well, actually. Okay, so please, if you want to criticize me, do it with constructive criticism down there in the comments. Don't tell me, yeah, I can do better, I can do it more efficiently, <laughs> you suck. Yeah, could you please tell me what I can do better, then I can try to improve. If you only post down there that I suck balls, then I'm going to lose confidence in what I'm doing here and I'm just going to stop with the series, alright? So please don't do that. Please don't be the guy telling me that I suck dick. And now we are going to dive right in. PAMF today. And this right here is a troll question being posted on actually good math problems. I'm looking at you, Keith. And well, we have a matrix M given and we want to compute M to the 25th power. The, the power really doesn't matter, okay? We are going to compute stuff later with a program, but for sake of um, exercise, we're going to say this is just to 25th power. And well, my initial thought was, well, we, we have the identity matrix hidden in here in three dimensions. So, so why not rewrite our M as being the addition of two things? Namely, this is the identity matrix in three dimensions plus, okay, what else do we have left? I mean, we have, mm, okay, on the main diagonal zeros, then we have a zero here, zero here, and a zero here, and on all the other entries we have a one. Okay, we are going to call this matrix, um, let's say this matrix right here is... <laughs> Small a. This is really curse notation if you ask me. I mean, not using capital letters for matrix. <laughs> that, that is really curse. Mm, uncomfortably curse math memes. And yeah, now we are going to, well, raise our m to the nth power. Really doesn't matter. And see what we are going to get out on the other side. Meaning, what exactly is m to the nth power? Well, this is nothing but our identity matrix plus our a to the nth power. And well, if you have the addition of two things to some power, then we are going to make use of the binomial theorem. But hold on, functional analysis <laughs> um, flashbacks. For this to hold, to use the binomial theorem, we need our real operators to compute our matrices. Under multiplication, hey, identity matrix, this is good, it does compute, so, so that's fine. So we can safely make use of our binomial theorem here, meaning, we have some running index, which is bounded between 0 and n, which is n, choose k terms. Okay, we are going to make it easy for us. Let's say this is a to the k of power, the index really doesn't matter, times the identity matrix in three dimensions to some power, really doesn't matter, identity matrix to any power is just the identity matrix in itself, and identity matrix times another matrix is just the matrix in itself. So this is good. Our expression kind of reduced to what we have here, and now, it's up to us what we are going to do and we are probably going to compute a few powers of a and see if we can find a certain pattern and group theoretically speaking our a is a really interesting element because it's kind of a shift operator you could say for rows and also it's cyclic what this means we are going to see in a second let us um, com compute a few powers and see if we can find a certain pattern all right it's a really interesting thing our a here so a to the zero of power um, obviously is going to be the identity matrix in three dimensions. Okay, good. Um, what about a to the first power? Mm, this is just a. And now here comes the interesting part. What is a squared? Well, a squared is nothing but a times a. Meaning I'm going to write it out, 0, 0, 1, and then we are going to have 1, 0, 0, and 0, 1, 0, times the same thing. 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. 
And now we are going to have some spastic attacks here because we are going to put uh, columns on rows and see what we are going to get out on the other side. So if we were to put this first column onto the first row, okay, this is going to give us zero. Everything's zero. If we put this onto here, we are going to get one. And this onto here, we are going to get zero. If you don't know what matrix multiplication is and how it works, um, please get out, all right? <laughs> it's the wrong video for you. Now, we are going to put this onto here. Okay, this is going to give us zero. We are going to put this onto here, zero. And we are going to put this onto here. Ah, this is one, good. Oh, I can see a certain pattern. This is great, this is really great. Now, last one, this onto here, one, and all the other ones are going to be zero. Now, what's the really interesting thing about A? Why did I say it's kind of a shift operator? If we take a look at our A, we are going to apply A to A in itself. And what happened? Well, all of our entries that we had in a certain row were shifted to the left, one unit. I mean, our one went to the left, one unit. Our one went to the left, well, and that has been put here, okay? We'll take a look at this here. Our one, one unit left. Okay, good. So this means our A is going to shift each and every entry in a row, one to the left. Meaning, if we were to apply our a to a squared yet again, meaning a to the third power. What are we going to get? Okay, everything one to the left. One is going to go here. Then our one is going to go into the middle. Oh, <laughs> this is spicy. And this one is going to go here. Okay, going over there. And it's down here in the corner. All the other entries are zero. And this right here, what is this? Well, that's our boy, the identity matrix in three dimensions. And speaking in group theoretical terminology, this is what we call a cyclic element of a group, for example. If we raise an element to some power and we get the identity of the respective group out on the other side, then it has a certain order. Meaning our order of A is going to be free. And do you know what the coolest thing is? If we have a to the fourth power now, this is exactly a to the third power times a. But a to the third power is nothing but the identity matrix. Identity times a is going to be a. Okay, good. a to the fourth power is a. What about a to the fifth power? Well, that's a to the third power times a squared. Identity times a squared is a squared. So a to the fifth power is going to give us, well, yet again, a squared. What about a to the sixth power? This is a to the third power but the whole thing squared. This is the identity matrix squared, which is just the identity. Okay, works out, it's cyclic. It returns back to the identity at some point by raising it to a certain power. And we can actually put this into nicer terms. Namely, we can do some spicy casework here. So what about a to the kth power? What is it going to be? We are going to consider three cases. Namely, we can get out the identity matrix in three dimensions. We can get out a in itself or a squared. But under what conditions are we going to get out those three? Well, the identity matrix is always there if we have a number up here being zero modulo three. I mean, three is zero modulo three. Um, six is zero modulo three. Zero is zero modulo three. Meaning, if we have k being congruent to zero modulo three, we are going to get ourselves the identity matrix out on the other side. What about simply a? Okay, a to the first power, a to the fourth power, a to the seventh power. This always happens if we have k being congruent to one modulo three. And the very last case, obviously, is, we, is when we have k being congruent to two modulo three. And yeah, this is basically what we are going to get. But it gets even better than that because we can actually see how our matrix is going to look overall after computing the 25th power or the nth power. Okay, how is it going to look exactly? Well, we are going to get out a summation of various n choose k's in some way all the time. 25 choose some case. But since our element A is cyclic, we are always going to get something out with either a factor of identity matrix, either a factor of A or a factor of A squared. Meaning overall, if we were to compute this right here, we are going to get, um, let's say, a factor X times the identity matrix. Then we are going to get a factor or a summon of, let's say, Y of um, A, Y times A. Okay, I hope you can see what I'm doing here. We're going to get a lot of two some things. Then we are going to factor out the identity matrix and the A and the A squared. And then we can actually add those matrices together. So last one is Z times A squared. 
and we don't need to stop there because we know exactly what our identity looks like, what our a looks like and what a squared looks like. What do they look like? I mean if we were to add all of those together we are going to get on the main diagonal because this is being represented by the identity matrix we are going to get x's. Then at the points where we have ones for a okay we are going to get y values meaning here here and here. So we are going to get y here, y here and y here and all the other spots we are going to get our z out. So our final matrix after adding everything together is going to look like this and our only task is to actually compute the summation of all the n choose k's in some way that we are going to get out on the other side and that's what we are going to do with Python now and the idea behind this is to get ourselves at first some kind of algorithm that is going to spit out the factorial in some way which is really easy it's just a recursive formula that we are going to multiply together with a bunch of stuff just how the factorial works in the normal case then we are going to get ourselves a function which is exactly n choose k for any n and any k that we are going to put into there and basically we are going to just take the reciprocal of some kind of factorials and after that we are going to define ourselves the summation of those factorials that we are going to have here of those chooses that we are going to have here and choose case in some way. And that's basically what we are going to do and I'm going to see you in Python in a second. Oh hi Augusaimas, what are you doing? Here's the Python part and I'm going to Here's the promise Python part. We are going to get ourselves the factorial at first because the factorial is the flesh and the bones of n choose k. So what we are basically going to do is we are going to do some recursion here. We are going to say okay we have function let's say fact of x and this function is going to be defined as follows. We are going to have our factorial which we are going to stack up in the product one after another using the recursion on. We are going to let it start at 1 because if f were equal to 0 then we would get an empty product being equal to 0. We really wouldn't make any sense so let's rather go with 1 and even if we have 0 factorial then it's going to spit out the 1 by definition after that if we define f to be equal to 1 at first. After that we are going to run a little loop so for i in range and what is our range exactly? Okay lower bound 0 wouldn't make any sense because well empty product and our upper bound is just going to be mm, our x plus 1 okay our factorial of x goes up until x plus 1 because the range is defined from our lower bound to n minus 1 basically so we're going to add 1 to it such that we actually get to our boy x okay how is this loop going to look well we are going to take ourselves our f and we are going to multiply f with itself and our running index i all the time okay we are going to use recursion we are going to um, refer to our f all the time in this multiplication and stack it up with all the other running in indices i basically. So f is going to be multiplied with itself and i all the time. And now we are just going to return our fact. Okay? And we are, um, we are going to return f not fact and then we are going to try it out. So let's say um, print fact of I don't know 13. Okay? And we are going to try it out and it's a big ass number and I hope it's correct. I just now checked with Wolfram Alpha and it is indeed correct. Whew. Now we are going to define ourselves n choose k. Define n choose k which is going to be a multivariable function with respect to n comma k. Now what does n choose k actually look like? Well it's just this tiny little equation of factorials you could say. So we are going to say um, choose is going to be nothing but okay what do we have exactly n comes first so this makes n factorial so fact of n divided by overall and I'm going to make everything an integer just because it's going to spit out an integer after all divided by okay what else are we going to have we are going to have fact of mm, n minus k n minus k factorial times don't forget your times mm, factorial of simply k and this should actually do the trick. Now we can return our choose and we can try it out. So n choose k of 25 comma 0 is going to be 1 which is true by definition. It's 25 factorial over 25 factorial. What about this one right here? Um, should spit out a tiny small number I suppose. 25 overall which does make sense and this is good. 
So now we are going to go ahead and define ourselves our actual edition where we want to go at. Our addition can be um, kind of generalized, meaning we are going to get ourselves an integer input which is like a lower bound, an upper bound and also a step size. Let me do this real quick. Um, I hope it's clear to you what the step size, lower and upper bound actually means. So our step size is going to be that we have modulo 3. We are going to go up in the summation three iterations each and every time. From 2 to 5, from 5 to 8 for example, if we have the lower bound of 2. Meaning we are going to go over all the 2 modulo 3. You can do so for the 0 modulo 3 and for the 1 modulo 3. Also our upper bound in our case is 25 in this problem or n. This is why I want to generalize it a bit more. Meaning we are going to define ourselves something that's called sum, really doesn't matter and it's a multivariable function with respect to the step size, our lower and our upper bounds. Other than that, we need something to stack up our summation, meaning we are going to say, okay, at, at first we have an empty sum being equal to zero. Also, we need to have a little running index for our um, loop to hold. Okay, so, so we need a running index there. Our running index, where is it going to start? It's going to start from our lower bound, meaning we are going to say our i, our running index starts at the lower bound. and our loop, which is going to be a, a, a while loop for example, I'm going to use a while loop here because it comes in quite handy, it's going to go over all the i's which we are going to increase by the step size all the time up until we reach our upper bound which is 25 in our case. Meaning as long as our i is less or equal to our upper bound, what are we going to have? So at first we are going to say that well our sum is going to be the sum of itself, the elements we had before, recursion and all the new n choose k's in some way. Meaning we are going to add to our sum itself and n choose k of what? Now I mean our upper bound stays constant, it's 25 in our case, so let's say our upper bound is just u that we are going to have here, our n. Now what is our lower bound? Our lower bound is exactly our running index that we are going to go over, meaning this is going to be i in our case. Other than that, we are going to raise our index by 3 all the time because we want to calculate modulo 2. Meaning i is going to be just itself and 3 added to it. In our case, it's the step size s. I'm terribly sorry. And this should basically conclude it. We are going to return our s after that. And this should do the trick. Now what is the summation? I'm going to print it. Let's see if it works out. Okay, we need a certain step size, which is 3. We need a lower bound, let's go for all the 0 modulo 3, meaning it's going to be 0, and the upper bound is going to be 25. And our answer is something big. Um, 11,184,811. Now what about the other ones? What about 1 modulo 3? So step size 3, lower bound is 1, and our upper bound is 25. Hey, it's the same number. And no, this is not a mistake. It turns out to be the same number. So mm, six out of nine entries are actually the same in this matrix. Now what about the last one? Maybe it's also the same thing. So let's go for a step size of three yet again. Our lower bound is two or the two modulo three and our upper bound is 25. Whoa, it's nearly the same. Only a one is missing there. Only a one. Okay, it's one less than the other entries in there, which is quite cool. And this basically concludes PyMath. And you can do this with other um, matrices or like with a bigger upper bound where some kind of um, some kind of cyclic argument works out. I thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, make a comment, channel if you like. If you want to support channel a bit more, go over to Flamble Maths 2 and subscribe there too. By the features I created to support channel on Patreon. Up until next video, I wish you guys. A freaking fantastic flamble day. Ciao.